One of the most important things in modeling in Blender is understanding scale. Scale is going to help you avoid a lot of mistakes and errors and proper disasters when you're modeling. So check this out. The basics are really simple, right? When you're going to add something to Blender, it's going to have specific dimensions. Like for example, cube is two by two by two meters. So if you go to end panel and go to item, you can see that. Now by default, the scale is going to be uniform. So it's going to be one by one by one. Now, if I'm going to start scaling this object, so the cube, right, on Y axis in object mode, look what's going to happen to Y axis, right? The scale on Y is going to get distorted and we're going to end up with a non-uniform scale. Now, this is a problem when you, for example, want to run bevels. So if I go to edit mode, select these two edges and control B them, you see we're going to get this. However, when I'm going to go to object mode, control A and apply scale and try to bevel these two, right? I'm going to get uniform bevel because now the scale is applied and back to uniform. So whenever your scale is one by one by one, that means the scale is uniform and it's been reset. And this is what you want when you're modeling. Now, certain add-ons like, for example, hardops and box cutter will do it automatically for you, which is why we suggest you use these add-ons because they will simply speed up your workflow by about eight times. And that's exactly what we teach you in our course, the ultimate guide to hardops and box cutter. It's a phenomenal course, which will teach you all the basics and also all the advanced features on these add-ons, including the workflow and all the tips and tricks and advanced menus as well. So grab the course. It's called the ultimate guide to hardops and box cutter 2.0. And the link is in the video description and also in the comment pinned under the video. So now going back, let me show you how this works in hard ups and box cutter. So watch the scale, yeah? If I'm going to scale this on Y axis and I'm going to try to cut it with a Boolean. So with, you know, with a Boolean using box cutter, the moment I draw the cutter, watch what's going to happen to Y scale, right? Boom, reset. And the same thing going to happen when I'm going to try to bevel it. So watch this. If I'm going to try to add bevel using hard ups, right? So Q and bevel, boom, the scale resets. Otherwise, again, you will have these distorted bevels, right? So when you work in Blender and you model, you need to remember about applying the scale. And again, hard ups and box cutter are going to do it for you. And they perform other multiple automatic operations, which make your life much easier. Like for example, applying weight and normal modifier to flex the shading is just a one click deal. You don't have to go to modifiers, etc., etc. And it kind of stacks up and eventually you're going to end up, you know, working eight times slower in vanilla blender, which again, why we suggest you work with add-ons. However, there are certain situations in which you don't want to apply scale and you can actually turn it off if you want in hard ups and box cutter. Uh, you can go to settings and switch it off. Um, for example, for box cutter, you go here to, I believe it was behavior and you can turn off the auto apply scale. And this is something that we teach you in the advanced section of the course. I go through all these settings uh, that are not covered, you know, anywhere else. Even the documentation at the moment is heavily outdated. So, you know, this is probably the only source of complete knowledge on these two add-ons. And again, I've been using them for ages, so, you know, I know them very well. But anyway, um, there are certain situations in which you don't want to apply scale. And it's really important to understand, okay? So I'll, I'll show you three, right? First one you already kind of seen. So um, when you want to, for some reason, create ununiform bevels, right? So you have something like this and you want to go here and create a bevel that's going to be really flat one of the ways of doing this would be simply not applying scale. So if you wanted to create something like this, go ahead and don't apply the scale. Another reason why you may not want to apply scale, it's duplicating objects by Alt D. So instead of going Shift D and creating a duplicate object, which basically is a separate object, it's a separate entity, and these two are not linked in any way, shape or form other than simply, you know, the fact that you duplicated this cube from this cube, right? But what I'm talking about here is duplicating using Alt D, which is going to create an instance. So watch this, click that Alt D, right? Looks the same, but what you can do now is select either of these 
and when you're gonna alter one of them the other is gonna adjust why because if you go here to data right this tab you see the linked you got two objects being linked if i duplicate it again you're gonna get three right now watch what's gonna happen when i'm gonna try to apply scale so alt a apply scale and boom there's an error if i'm going to apply my scale right now i'm going to unlink all of them watch right apply scale boom and now if i'm going to try to do anything here nothing happens right uh, but these two are still connected so since i apply scale on this one the others are not linked anymore however right however let me just go back here and duplicate this one i'll d boom right so now all of them are linked right and i'm going to apply scale on this one right see now the issue is that this one will be unlinked and these two are gonna be linked so uh, let's say that you're working on a model and you apply screws right you just place screws or some details repetitive details on your model and you want to um, have this ability of adjusting them all of them at the same time right so you adjust one of them and the other ones adjust automatically that's when you're going to be using this so what you want to do right what you want to do you want to adjust the scale and apply the scale if you want to before you're going to duplicate it right so if I'm going to, you know, scale it and then I wanted to duplicate this object, right? Let's say I had some, I don't know, some kind of a chamfer to whatever here, right? Like, a, you know, let's just make it narrower, kind of like a hinge or whatever, like a, like a nodge, right? And I wanted to duplicate it all over my model. What I want to do first is I want to apply the scale before I do anything else, right? And then I can Aldi and duplicate it and you know place it wherever i want and then i don't have to worry about the scale i can just you know keep adjusting them i'm gonna be fine so that's a second example now last example i'm gonna give you is actually quite interesting let's say you're modeling and you are running a block out right and you're working in object mode and you're scaling something and um, then you decided well maybe that's not what i want i want to go back and sort of like reset it right what you can do is you can press Alt S, which is going to reset the scale. These keys are similar for scale, for rotation, for location. So if I, for example, scale this, rotate it and move it, I can press Alt S to reset the scale, Alt R to reset the rotation and Alt G to reset the location. Unless you're going to apply it because you can apply, you know, location, rotation, scale or everything, right? I would never use this, by the way, just a pro tip usually right usually i apply scale rotation sometimes especially when i'm working with arrays or decals location almost never right it's just a very rare occasion when you're going to be needing this right maybe when you're working with curves but other than this forget about it so watch this right if i'm going to scale this, this is my advice and i'm going to scale it here and make it a bit thinner right and i say well this is kind of like a base point you know kind of like a like a stepping stone for me uh, you know kind of like a milestone right so i'm going to think like okay this is a milestone i kind of like this and i want to kind of move forward from here right so i would apply scale here which is going to kind of set this scale and sort of uh, apply it to these dimensions right so you see now it's reset and if i want to adjust this cube a little bit further and i change my mind if I press alt s it's gonna revert back to the moment when i applied it you see what i mean now there is an add-on as a tip i can give you which is called i think world align so even if you apply scale rotation and location you can still kind of you know undo it uh, using this add-on so these would be the three instances i can think of that are very practical you know in practical sense when you would not want the scale to be applied other than this uh, it doesn't really matter maybe for texturing sometimes you know like for example when you have like a let's say you have a plane here and i'm going to let me just uh duplicate it and scale this one i'll show you the difference and let's say i'm gonna be i'm gonna be using our add-on the material works add-on which is superb if you want quick mats, you know, you should grab it. Let me just grab something that you can see, like, for example, these dots, right? And also slap them in here, okay? Or maybe something a bit more visible, like uh, like a floor. Or maybe this hexagon. That's actually kind of cool. Cool, let me just change the lighting here uh, to something a bit, uh, a bit better. There we go. So now, look, watch this. You see that when I scale this, um, this plane, the texture scales with it right 
but if I apply a scale, it's gonna reset. So you could use it technically to, you know, changing the the scale of texture very quickly. For example, when you're rendering something, right? Like when you have a floor and your camera is somewhere here and you want to make these, uh, you know, the, the the pattern on the floor a little bit larger, you just scale the floor, right? Don't don't apply the scale or scale it incrementally. So scale it a little bit, apply the scale, right? And scale some more. So, you know, it's kind of a way of sort of going around the scale and, and uh, you know, I could sometimes use it when I'm rendering, when I want to have a slightly bigger pattern, I just scale the floor, done, right? But these will be like the four instances I can think of other than some really complicated stuff like particles or, or you know, like uh, physics, whatever, when you maybe need to play with scale on a deeper level. But for like 90% of uh, modeling techniques, that's when I would not apply scale. And, um, and you know, so remember that you're going to be good to go. Now, the last thing I'll tell you is that if you do not want to affect scale when you're modeling, what you want to do is you want to change the size of your object in edit mode because edit mode will not affect it whatsoever. So if I go here back to item, right? And you see the scale here. If I duplicate this cube and, you know, I'm going to scale it down, let's say, right? My scale is going to shift, okay? But look what happens when I'm going to do the same thing in edit mode, right? So I select all these and scale it in the same way, more or less. And you see my scale is uniform. So edit mode will not affect scale at all, right? So if you want to scale something a little bit, let's say make it, you know, wider on X, what you can do is, you know, select these faces here in the loop, right? S, X and scale it and you're good to go. So there are many ways of doing it. So when you're in edit mode, remember the scale will not be affected. But when you're in object mode, every time you do it, it's going to be affected. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And like I said, if you're interested in learning the basics of Blender, grab our course, the Hard Surface Accelerator, which will teach you everything you need to know about Blender tools, menus, modeling, and even the principles of designs are included. So it's going to help you become a better artist, understand how to progress from a cube to some kind of a cool block out to a model, which is something that 80 to 90% of people struggle with. Every single artist, doesn't matter how good they are, they always have some sort of an artist block. And that's why they're practicing all the time, you know, um, just doodling on the paper or in Blender just to get better. So, you know, everyone struggles with it. You know, you're not the only one. So don't think, you know, you suck or something. Everyone has the same problem and you get better with practice. So this course will just help you understand how these principles work so you can consciously, you know, start getting better at modeling. Anyway, the link is in the video description. The course is called The Hard Surface Accelerator. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.